Asher Armstrongs, and I have a partner, um, which is Arif. Who is Arif? He's right next to me. Oh, hello, Arif. Hey, everybody. And I think um, you, you should be married <laughs> to him. Well, the truth is that we are already married right. because this is my work husband. Work wife. Yeah, it's true. So, Arif, do you want to introduce yourself a bit? Sure. Um, I'm Arif Gassam, a science coach with Frontier School Division, and Jack's work partner. Um, and so I've been working with drones quite often. Yeah, Arif is our drone expert. Um, Simon, you have some jokes there. You want to start with one for Arif? Um, why did the drone get sent to his room? Ooh, good question. I don't know. His dad always said to him. Oh, that's a good one, too. Very nice. Good one. All right, so we already have uh, Liam saying hi all the way from Thompson. Can the drone boys come here for banana? Well, let's ask that question. But first of all, Liam says hi. Hi. And so does Auntie Lisa. Hi. All right. So you had a question just now. Why don't you ask Arif? Mm -hmm. Can a drone blade cut up my bananas? <laughs> Can a propeller on a drone? Yeah. That's a good question. Um, the little ones, probably not. It just gets stuck in the banana. And it's just like really weird. But the bigger drones, yeah, they would slice right through a banana. Or many bananas. Hmm. Wow. Yeah. You know, there's a whole bunch of stuff you need to know about drone safety. So that you don't get your bananas sliced up. All right, so you've got some stuff to show us? I do, yeah. So what we're gonna do, so I'm gonna start with a, a little drone here. So this here, uh, this is an indoor drone. It's what we call a uh, Rise Tello. And what you'll notice is there is, who's that on top there? Cowboy me. Cowboy. I'm a cowboy, son. yeehaw! So that's an attachment. It's actually not part of the drone itself, but it's it can be attached to it. If you look at a small drone like this. See, it's not attached. Exactly, yeah. Um, what you'll notice is it has a lot of different parts, right? So the parts include these things, which are what? Props and yeah. an engine. Yeah, so it's got propellers. Um, it's got arms, right? It's got a battery. You can pull out here. They, they kind of look like computer chips. They do, yeah. They're like really big computer chips. And what's on the front there? Um, camera. There's a camera on the front. Also, um, with the drone, you can take selfies. You can take some really cool selfies from like 300 feet up. That's a really long selfie stick. <laughs> and it also has these little eyes in the bottom there, which you guys will see. What do you all think those are? Sensors. Very good. Easy. So sensors, yeah. And what do the sensors do? I don't know, they sense things. <laughs> That's right, they sense things. So it senses how how high up off the ground it is, essentially. Those are your basic parts in the body. There's a lot of stuff in compu the computer chips inside that will manage its function, that will make it work. Um, but besides that, it's what Can you I have. Can I hold the drone now, even though it would cut my bananas or cheddar? So I want you to hold that. And I'm going to introduce you to a bigger drone. Oh, yeah. I, I think of it as a mini spaceship model. I think of it, um, I'm sitting behind it, and I think of it as a mini spaceship model. Hmm, interesting. So this, this is an outdoor drone. Uh, it's a little bit heavier, and it's got the same... Is this one able to cut up bananas? Basic kind of shape. Probably not. No, not this one. Bananas are pretty tough. But they're smooshy and juicy. They are, yeah, you're right. So what you'll notice about this is it's got the same kind of anatomy, right? What do we have? Propellers. Props. Props. Arms. Um, a body. Body. A very... Secure chip. Sweet cam on the front. Right? Um, and then it has... Kind of looks like the window of a little spaceship. It does kind of look like the window of a spaceship. 
And it also has those sensors, right? But it also has sensors on the front teeth, which is super cool. And this were a little bit bigger and people were able to ride in it, I'd, if I had enough money, I'd definitely buy it. Oh, would you? Yeah. This is a great little drone. Um, we call it an outdoor drone because it actually shouldn't be flown inside. It's just under the limit of 250 grams. So, but what it also can do is it, this camera there, it can turn around and go up and down. Whereas the Tello is just one direction. That's it. Mm -hmm. This is the battery that's a little bit bigger for this bigger drone. Uh, but the basic anatomy is the same. And they're both controlled by Controller. controllers. Are we going to fly this? Very similar. Or are we just going to fly this? We're going to fly that little guy. Okay. So this is a simple controller. Looks like a PS4 controller or like a Xbox controller. And this is a little bit more advanced where you can put like an iPad in it. And it's got these cool antennas that come out on top. Small iPad. What's that? A small iPad. A small iPad, like an iPad mini. Like, like this. So the antennas have to go out like this when you're when you're flying the drone. They have to have to point. So you never want to point the antennas at it. They actually have to like point upwards. Yeah, why? Too. Why not at it? Because um, when antennas work, just like when you listen to the radio in your car or something, yeah. what they're doing is giving a signal. Oh, from like... um. From what the signal thing will give you? I'm in space? Um, from a tower. So FM signals always come from a tower. And the tower, if this imagine this was like an FM tower that's going to your car. It goes out from the tower like this. Okay. But not like this. So when you're flying your drone, then the drone has to like hear what your controller is saying. And since these don't work like this, you have to bring them up so they can like that. You know what I mean? So they're like radio towers. And it's the direction of the radio waves. Yeah, exactly. That's right. Hmm, that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, so we have a big hello to both of you coming from RJ Rolden. He says, Good hey, morning, Simon, Jacqueline, and Arif. Hey. Right. So that's the oh, next step. You mean Simon and the perfect couple? <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> And then this one is a professional drone. Wow, can that one slice up bananas? This can slice up bananas. Yay! <laughs> so take a look at this. Bananas, 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 bananas. Bananas. There. So take a feel of that one. Oh, wow. This one's heavy. Oh. Three. Three in a box of crackers. This one grams. Three. Yeah, that's uh, that's right. Yeah, it's over a kilo, you're right. Please. That's exactly right. Oh, this is heavy. It is heavy, isn't it? And Excuse a me? lot of the weight. Freeze. Oh, we've got a freeze gun here, which is also I science, freeze. right? Oh, <laughs> Jeez. Simon, freeze. No, you froze the drone. Yeah. Freeze. Um, Ella, do you want to come and sit and check no. out the drone? No, freeze. Okay. Freeze. And freeze. So, um, it's really heavy because part of what's on this drone is this thing. What's that there? Freeze. That's right, yeah. The big strongest battery. That's right, yeah. It's a really big battery compared to the others. So the bigger the drone? The bigger the battery. Correct. Because the more energy I need to fly. Exactly right, yeah. These batteries are special. They're not like the batteries in your phones or in your uh, remote TV remotes. These are called LiPo batteries. And what they do is they give off energy really, really fast to power these, these motors. So they're pretty unstable is what we call them. I have a question. Um, the bigger the battery, does that mean the drone can fly longer? Does it have an effect on time? Uh, typically, yeah, yeah, absolutely. There is a ratio there, like, um, yeah, the, the bigger the battery, then the longer the flight time. It, it has a lot to do with the drone's weight, um, but they're, they seem to be in proportion, like, 
the big, yeah. If the drone is, let's say the drone's 100 more grams, then the battery might be, you know, 100 more grams kind of thing. Thank you. Um, folks, our virtual audience, please remember if you have questions um, about drones, Arif is our expert and you can bring in questions at any time. So if we take a look, the same anatomy we have for, for propellers, four arms, sensors in the front, sensors in the bottom, and the camera. In the front. And a sliced up banana. And a sliced up banana. <laughs> you got it. Alright, so Simon, did you want to uh, demonstrate something to them? Yeah. Okay. So, um, before he demonstrates, can we do one little quick activity with our audience back home? You bet. Alright, so Simon, I'm going to need you to stand up with me. So, I guess I'll be fine too. And what we're going to do is we're going to need everybody to stand up. And we're going to do some drone dancing here. So the first drone dance we're going to do is a pitch. So a pitch is when a drone flies forward. So put your arms out. Put your arms out. And we're all going to pitch forward. And we're flying forward and flying forward and pitching forward. And now we're going to pitch back. Pitch back. Got to pitch back. There we go. Flying backwards. Now we're going to... Roll to the side, and then we're gonna roll to the other side. Roll, and now we're gonna yaw. You gotta say it with me though. Yaw. A little louder. Yaw. 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 That's right. So yaw. pitch forward, pitch back, roll side, roll side, and yaw. Yaw. <laughs> that is so awesome. Cool. All right, Simon, do you have another joke? Yeah. This one I personally denied it at all. Um, Let's see if Arif gets it. Um, my friend's drone business closed down. It just didn't take off. <laughs> That's a good one. When you launch a drone, they take off, just like airplanes take off. Um, do you get it? All right. All right. So we're going to do a demo, but while we're doing the demo, the drone is going to be a little bit loud. So Arif and Simon can talk to each other, but we probably won't hear them. So have a look at the drone. And then if you have questions, bring them into the chat and then we will chat again after the demo. So what I'm doing is I'm connecting the drone, the controller and my phone, my simple cell phone. All together to fly it. Uh, simple cell phone. Why do you have the Android? No, it's an Android. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm an Android guy. Android. Are you an Apple or an Android? I think it's an Apple. You're an Apple guy. Yeah. Ooh, free to get very wrong. It's true. Those are the laws. <laughs> all right, so we're all connected here. Why can't you just tune it? Two different businesses of phones. Why can't you marry that each other because of that? It's kind of the law. Oh, right. Android and no. Apple law. We, no. we so. still think you would be a perfect couple. I don't know if you can get this on your camera. Do you want to hold this sure. and look directly at us? Do not launch. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you got to pull your finger off the front of the camera there. Yeah, it's showing us here. But you can see it, the camera. Oh. oh, Simon, you're moving around all crazy. There we go. <laughs> yeah. So that's what we see. So we'll put it down on something flat. Just down right here. Nice and flat. There we go. Yes. Be prepared for a ton of noise. Okay, here we go. Or you can just plug your phone in. There she goes. Oh, Whoa. Ah! She's going for a, <laughs> go for a spin. Hang on a second, bud. Can I launch that one more time for you? This is a great example of why we only use the indoor drones indoors. It sort of went uh, off filter for a second. I think what it did... I think what it did is it detected something different, like the extra weight, and it didn't um, make changes in its brain. 
So it ended up going like that. So that now that the changes are all set, it should be okay. Go up and down. A little up, a little further up. He's lying on my mom. <laughs> I don't think I'm probably ready that. And then let's pitch forward together. Right, Joyce? Yeah. There you go. And pitch back together. There we go. Let's roll to the left. Right, Joyce? Yeah, and roll to the right. Cool. And then y'all, yeah. I'm gonna do what you do. Oh, 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 oh! I got it, I got it. Oh, you saved it. Good. Whoa. Can you do it again? Yeah. Try a different direction on that pad there. let me touch it. If I get under it, it pushes itself up no, 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 no. because of the sensor. No. Right? And if I grab it, it'll turn itself off. So cool. All right. Okay, you want to have a seat again? We have some questions for our drone expert. Oh, good. All right. How was that, Simon? Um, so how come it gives you a headache? Noisy! Pardon me? Noisy! Yeah, it is noisy. Um, but when you're outside, you don't really notice the noise. Probably because we're inside. All right, so we have... Yeah, that's right. So we have a few questions for our drone expert. Simon, go for it. Your questions are right beside you. So these... We have four questions just to quiz you. S-U-A-S. Yeah. Uh, well, U-A-S is an unmanned aerial system. And S-U-A-S... I've never heard the first S. Would that be a single unmanned aerial system or a submerged? Um, no. Okay, what is it, Simon? Um, small unmanned air systems. Small unmanned air systems. Okay, interesting. Unmanned and waterborne. Ah. There's a lot of different um, acronyms. So it used to be UAV, um, also UAS. It changed to RPAS or RPAS. Sort of depends where you are in the world, but that's a cool one. I like it. Um, how many people work at the US Air Force for data and footage? Oh. How many people, what was that? Um, not, how many people work at the US Air Force for data and footage? Oh, Drone data and footage. Right. How many people? Just in the U.S. Air Force. Just in the U.S. Air Force, drone data, I would probably say like 10,000. No, kind of close, but not, too, but not quite. Go ahead. 70,000. Holy smokes. 70,000. A little bit off there. Just 60,000 more meals and you'll, you'd be correct. Thank goodness. Okay, Simon, nice and loud when you're asking the next okay. question. Who is um, Reginald? Who is Reginald Denny? Reginald Denny? I do not know. The person who created the first remote control aircraft in World War II. World War II, hey? Oh my goodness, it's 
ancient. Did you know I was in the that last war? Question. Did, you know, <laughs> did you know I was in that war? <laughs> Arif was in World War Two. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that was only like um, eighty years ago. Yes, yeah, terribly long ago. Um. <laughs> did say that the first remote control aircraft was World War II. Um, my history is not great, but I'm going to say in the late 30s, early 40s? Nope. Shoot. 1849. 1849? Wow. That's a long time ago. Yeah. And do you remember what it was? It was a balloon. Oh, interesting. Yeah. You stumped me on all those, bud. Nice work. Yay, Brian Alan. I stumped them out with um extra. He stumped the scientist again. All right, so we wanted to talk about something that Simon created kind of at the back there. And Arif, can you tell us about um a little bit more about drones? We have a question of what are some ways that we use drones here in Winnipeg and Canada? And then we can get into the cool drone feature that you were talking about before. For sure. Um, so there's a lot of ways people use them. Um, the most common practices for drone use in Canada... Is fun. Is... Oh, God. Actually, you could be kind of right there. Um, I'd say half fun, like recreational. Um, but the jobs are like inspections. So if you're trying to... If you look at big wind turbines or on the tops of buildings... It's a lot easier for a drone to get up there and take a look around than it is for people to. Um, so inspections um, and agriculture. So a lot of farmers are starting to use drones to um, determine the health of their crops and also use them to spray fertilizer over them instead of using big tractors and manned labor. Anything to add to that, Simon? No, not. And also it's fun? All right. There is a there is a drone racing league in Manitoba, so there are some pretty cool enthusiasts out there that fly really fast drones in races around fields and through hoops and stuff. That's considered a drone. Yeah, look at that. Ella's got a little remote control one going there. <laughs> Anything remote control is essentially a drone. Yeah. Okay, so, so we wanted to talk a little bit about drone attachments. Yeah. Um, so basically, if you uh, have your license, like to drive a car, this person would like to join. <laughs> you need a license to fly a drone, like Cowboy Simon over there. Um, and when you do have your license, you're not allowed to fly over people, but there's one way that you're allowed to fly over people. You need to make sure your drone has a parachute. Believe it or not, like an actual parachute. So when people jump out of planes and pull their chutes, well, there's an attachment for drones called a para-zero system that will deploy a parachute in case the drone crashes to the ground and so it doesn't hurt anybody. And so Simon <laughs> built some example parachutes, right? Yeah. Do you want to show us those parachutes? Why don't we have a look at the drone parachute first? The drone will Yeah. So Simon... Yeah, can you explain? You can show everyone here what you created here. No, we'll get it untangled. There we go. So what did you build here? Little drone thingy that not really a drone. Well, can you come in, Come over here and explain it over here? Oh. Can you tell us what the parts are? The body, the thingies that hold up the prop, and the propeller. And those are the propellers? Yeah. Not really my best job, though. Well, I think it's a pretty good job, especially since we just had a Lego session on Monday, too. This is pretty good. So we're going to see if this parachute works to slow down the Lego. Um, and what did you use to create this parachute? What materials? Paper and blue string. Yeah, it's kind of like um, ribbon. And uh, guess what? Oscar and Churchill says hi. Hi! <laughs> All right, so how are we going to test this? Simon, do you want to stand up on here or do you want Arif to stand up on there and do the test? Um, Oscar, um, congratulations for winning your second prize. Oh, that's right. We're getting it in the mail today. Okay, so let's test out this parachute. Simon, do you want to do the honors or would you like Arif to do the honors? I'm going to feed 
Okay. You want okay. me to do it? Well, then we'll leave it out. All right. You just tell me how high you want me to drop it from. And it might break, but that's okay. We're just seeing how well this parachute. Okay, so you do the countdown, Simon. One, two, three, go. Oh, that drone lost it. But did you see that the air actually did catch it a little bit? So it was pretty good. All right, Simon, now get your next drone that you, or your next parachute that you created. Okay, sorry, say that again. This one. So this, this one. It's going to have a very bad impact on his head. So what did you use on this one? The little person in a bag. Okay, let's do that. Hey. Let's test it out. Hey, I can't read what it says, so never mind. <laughs> Is that Michael? Yeah, I think so. I got crazy now. So, Simon, you can do the honors. Okay, oh, I mean, you can do the countdown is what I meant. One, two, three, go. It kind of worked. Yeah, it kind of did work. It definitely slowed now, it down. Now here's the big grand finale. So what did you use with this one? Blue ribbon again. Two of the tissue paper and green tape. And a yellow ribbon, which would also have a very bad impact on our head. So how come you used, Simon? What? How come you used two layers of tissue? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. So do you want to come on here? You guys can do the drop together. Hang on, hang on. Hold one side and I'll hold the other, and then we'll drop it together. One, two, three, go. Definitely worked. She still has a bad impact. There's still a bad impact, of course, but it definitely worked. Um, so, Arif, can you tell us how this relates to what would happen if a drone had to use a parachute? Yeah, um, so if a drone had to. If a drone? Die, then you need a parachute, kind of well, Simon, 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 can you say that again so everyone can understand what you're saying? Come stand with a reef, please. That's exactly right. Yeah. Okay, well, say it again. Can we... Oh, so we can understand you. Yeah. Yeah. Just about anything can happen for a drone to malfunction. Um, so maybe the battery dies, maybe there's a loss in signal, uh, maybe a bird just attacked it, or it hit something, or it hit a building. Mm -hmm. Maybe, fair enough. Or maybe it's a, an air current came and like threw it off. So just about anything can happen for a drone to just fall right out of the sky. Mm -hmm. And if there's anybody under it, it needs... Something like... Yeah, a All right. So Simon... I would like you to tell everyone what the challenge is for today. Make a parachute so it could slow down any type of weight. Right. Any type of weight, like a Lego guy or uh, something, a small toy, and see what it can do. Yeah. So we have a big thank you to say here today. Bye-bye, everyone. -bye, <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, Ari, for coming on over today and bringing all the cool drone stuff. Can I buy a drone from you? You can buy a drone from me. I'll sell you one for four thousand dollars. <laughs> All right. Have a good day, everyone.